Welcome to the Thursday, June 28th, 2018 meeting of the Longmeadow School Committee. I call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded and aired live by LCTV as well as being live streamed on longmeadow.org. It's a legal requirement for anyone else to disclose if they are recording this meeting. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America okay I don't believe we have any correspondence this week so we can move right into the approval of minutes I move that the school committee approve the minutes to the June 14th, 2018 school committee meeting as presented. Second. Any discussion? We can move right to a vote. <coughs> All those in favor? Any opposed? Abstained? Okay. Can I ask one thing? Yes. Diane, on the agenda was our um, um, assignments of subcommittees. Will you be? Coming out with um, a one-page list like you did last year of the breakdown. Yes, I okay. actually have it. I just I okay, no problem. I'll, Thank I'll you. send it out to you. Thank you. Okay, so motion passes. Um, we have no visitors this evening. School committee announcements and recognitions. Does anyone have anything they would like to offer? Seeing none, we can move right into business with guests. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have any tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Administrative reports. We can move on to Marty, who has a brief superintendent report for Very us. brief. Uh, no written report this evening. Uh, but I would mention that um, the town's permanent building committee had reached out to us, uh, hoping that they could tour our middle schools. And so uh, we've set aside July, Tuesday, July 24th, as an opportunity for the uh, Permanent Building Committee to join us on a tour of the two middle schools. They're trying to understand the deficiencies of those two schools. Uh, I think both uh, Chair and Co-Chair, Beth and Karen, will join us on those tours. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted if they have any, any questions or conclusions that they make. And that's it. Well, thank you. I don't have an official report, but I feel since this is my first night really as chair, um, I was just going to make a brief comment and thank you all for your vote of confidence <coughs> last time we met and voting me in as your chair. I'm really looking forward to working with everyone this year. I think we have a great team assembled here. Um, I hope that I serve you well as your leader this year. Um, but I can't move on without giving credit to the people who um, guided me the past year. And I know Michelle and Russ and Jess did not want any public re recognition at all. Um, and Jess did, was not in attendance at our last meeting to receive her award. But I really feel that I need to give credit um, to Michelle Grodsky, who led us all last year with such grace and intelligence and <clears throat> integrity. And Russ, who led us with his humor, <laughs> his intellect, um, his great analytical skills, and his amazing ability to um, pull together information. They were really guiding forces for us and I really would like to thank them, not just for their leadership, but really for their friendship. And for Jess Hutch Hutchins, um, for her passion for our district, which I was always in amazement at how well she could articulate that passion. Um, all of those people brought something to the table and I feel like they never got their recognition and I may look like an idiot doing it, but I'm gonna clap for them, <laughs> even if I'm by myself. <laughs> um, it is well-deserved and long overdue and I know they didn't want a fuss made. But that being said, I want to welcome Bronwyn and Ryan um, to our little governance team here. I have had the ability to sit in with Ryan on two subcommittee meetings already and he is taking the reins and asking thoughtful questions and rolling up his sleeves and getting the work done. So um, that is completely admirable. And Bronwyn, I haven't had the chance to work on a committee with yet, but I've interacted with you a few times and I'm really excited about what you're gonna bring to the table this year and I really look forward to you working with all of us, but getting to know you better. 
um, as well. So I think the brief message I wanted to say is as far as the district goes, I'm a firm believer in setting goals, um, partnering, and, and accountability for those goals. So once we're all on the same team and we establish the goals and we all hold our ch ourselves accountable and each other accountable for those goals, um, that's how we move forward as a district and get the work done. And I, I'm really looking forward to that. So that is my brief little chair spiel, I guess, tonight. Um, we don't have Breggy with us joining us as the student rep to the school committee. And other reports would be LPVEC or food service. So I went to the corporation meeting last night, which was uh, brief. It was just to name the officers, and I had the pleasure of being named the clerk. <laughs> and then we approved some uh, building improvements um, at the facility. Uh, I attended the LPVEC um, board meeting last evening. Uh, it was great to meet all the new people there. Uh, they, we voted to pass the budget. Uh, we voted to keep the same officers that were already officers last year. And also they wanted people to pass along the message that they need bus drivers. Anyone interested should contact Joanne at the LPVEC. Thanks. All good information. Um, we will move on to our, unless there's any other discussion on that, we'll move on to our subcommittee report, starting with the finance <coughs> subcommittee. Finance sub met on the 19th, and I don't know if uh, Tom wants to take it away. Sure. <laughs> so we had a number of uh, agenda items um, under our reorganization. Stephanie is now the chair of the finance sub. Um, the first item that um, they made recommendation on is a budget transfer for the Medco grant. Um, it's included in your packet and we are looking to transfer $7,751 <coughs> out of the uh, supply line into administrative uh, transportation. Um, the cost of transporting, uh, providing transportation to the Medco students exceeds the amount that we had budgeted at $87,900. Um, so the additional money that was not spent on supplies, the 7751 was requested to move that to offset some of that cost that was borne by the general fund. Uh, and that item was recommended for approval by finance sub. So we would do matter the motion? Sure. Um, yes. I move on the recommendation of the Finance Subcommittee that the school committee approve the budget transfer as outlined in the document FY18 Grants and Special Revenues, transfer number four, dated June 19, 2018. Second. Any discussion? So we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Opposed or abstain? Motion passed. <clears throat> the next item um, would be to authorize uh, the superintendent to approve transfers that are needed at the end of the fiscal year to close out um, any line items that are in <clears throat> deficit. Uh, the transfers would be made in accordance with school committee policy DBJA, which kind of spells out exactly uh, under what circumstances transfers need to be made. We've been trying, we've been adhering to a little uh, tighter and trying to not have any lines in a deficit. Um, so it increases the number of transfers that are necessary to make that happen, but it just seems to be a little cleaner um, as we're processing the end of year purchases that school committee authorized a few meetings ago. We're gonna have a number of lines that are gonna require transfers. Uh, and this authority will prevent from having to have meetings throughout the summer to approve those budget transfers. So we have a motion for the end of year budget transfers. Yeah. You want me to read it? I move on the recommendation of the finance subcommittee and as specified in the school committee policy DBJA that the school committee grant authority to the superintendent to approve the necessary budget transfers between Munis budgetary lines in order to close the FY 2018 accounts. Second. Any discussion on the motion? So we'll call to a vote. All those in favor? 
Opposed or abstained? So the motion passes and we have one final uh, request from subfinance. So there is a building use request which uh, was submitted um, by Mount Holyoke College for use of Wolf Swamp Road School classroom to offer a, um, a professional development opportunity um, for teachers um, in regards to math. It's building a system of tens uh, operating with whole number and decimals. So it is um, kind of expanding on the math professional development that was offered to teachers this year. Um, it is uh, being offered by a professor from Mount Holyoke College. Um, and so they are looking to use one classroom starting in September. Uh, it's probably going to extend later than the November 9th date based on some recent information to give teachers a little more time in between each class. Initially they were thinking it would run for about 10 weeks. They're thinking they might want to extend it so that there's some breaks in between where there's some assignment that they have to work on before the next class. So um, the back end might be a little more open-ended. Um, this also will give employees an opportunity to get um, professional development points and or college credit. So um, as part of the request, they would be willing to offer a reduced rate for Long Meadow teachers to participate in the course. Instead of um, for $549, Long Meadow teachers would be able to participate for $400. Um, and they would receive uh, professional development points for that participation. And they could pay an additional uh, fee of $500 to receive two college credits for their participation. Um, I believe the, the, the PDPs was 30 hours, was my rec hours. recollection. Yep. Um, in exchange for the reduced rate, they are asking that we waive the fee that we would charge for building use. Um, this is coming before you because of the number of uh, meetings that would occur. By policy, I think if it's more than uh, 10 meetings, it has to come to, or re repeated use, it has to come to finance, from finance of the school committee. So finance sub did recommend that school committee approve the request for use. Thank you, Tom. Welcome. Did anyone want to read the motion? I can. That's fine. I'll do it. Um, <clears throat> I move that the school school committee approve the building use request from Mount Holyoke College for use of a classroom at Wolf Swamp Road School fall 2018 with the building use fee waived. Second. Any discussion on the motion? We'll call to a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed or abstained? So the motion passes, and we can move on to policy subcommittee, which <coughs> did not meet yet. So next on our agenda would be the evaluation subcommittee, which met on Monday, June 25th, and Ryan will give us a report on that meeting. So we met on uh, 25th, where we um, elected me to be chair of the subcommittee, and we discussed the uh, roles and responsibilities of the committee, which is in your packet. Briefly, it's to re recommend a timeline for the superintendent's evaluation, review and provide feedback, the development of the plan, conduct a mid-cycle review plan, I'm sorry, provide monthly formative feedback on the superintendent's progress towards his evaluation goals, and directly communicate committee concerns and compliments, and coordinate the end of cycle summative review and prepare for the superintendent's evaluation. Um, so we recommend it to <coughs> Uh, accept the document that's in front of you. Is that online? Because I didn't see it and now I'm wondering if I missed it, but it's not, it wasn't put on the drive. I thought it was sent in an email. Was it sent just to us? Oh, it might have been sent just to the subcommittee though. So it might not be. So I haven't seen it. Do not see it? That's right there. Yeah. Okay. yeah, mine's just in color. Okay. So I'm not missing it, right? It's not on there. I can't say I'll, for certain. I'll take a I'll take a peek here. Do you recall Diane? Yeah, if, 
I thought it was, but I don't see it now. So if it's helpful, Stephanie, the the portion above the asterisk is, I think, was the mostly the focus of the committee subcommittee's discussion, and the portion below the asterisk is sort of some verbiage from the um, Department of Education. Okay. So if it helps you do the review, okay. I think the bullets were the the five or six bullets there were the sort of the biggest chunk of the meeting, the focus right. of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. So is, um, is the mentor part of this or is this separate? As that? Well, I can probably let Marty speak to some of that, but okay. um, it, it should be said that as Marty was breaking down the different sections, this document is in itself um, a work between Marty and Patty. Okay. So I think Marty's correct in saying that everything below the asterisk is taken from Desi, but I do believe um, Patty and Marty worked on the, the top, top portion yep. Yep. together. Um, so she was um, present. And she called in a she conference call at our, at our at our first subcommittee okay. meeting. Yep. So she was yep. so is she, answering questions. Is she part of this me the meeting with the subcommittee every time or once in a while or I I, I think probably not, but <laughs> I think if there's some, you know, um, procedural concern that the subcommittee, you know, would like some support or advice on, she might be there as a resource, but um, I don't think that was the plan, but. In the other part of the meeting, we spent um, talking about the timeline for the superintendent's plan so that it would be available for a first reading on July 25th. The mid cycle would be in early January and the end of cycle would be given to us in mid April um, so that we would have time to make our uh, report on it. Is that in here, those dates? Can you That's say those again? Sure, July 25th. Okay. First reading of the superintendent's plan. Right. Mid cycle, early January, we didn't pick a date. Okay. End of cycle, mid April. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did anyone else have any comments or questions for Marty or Ryan as far as the document or how the evaluation subcommittee was set up? questions. Okay. <laughs> I know I had a lot of questions. So um, when I was trying to get a sense of what the subcommittee was going to be, so is this tied into last year's eval in an improvement plan or is the annual plan going to incorporate some of those things that were mentioned or is there any sort of tie-in or is this just um, There is, but I'll let Marty. Yeah, I think, it, I think the idea would be that the annual plan would incorporate um, the improvement goals. In fact, I'm talking okay. to I'll be talking to uh, Patty Grenier tomorrow about that, okay. um, sort of how that how that might all fit together. But that would be the idea. And that was the gist of our discussion okay. when we were talking about the roles and responsibilities, how the the point of the monthly um, the monthly feedback. So we'll be based on the stuff that Patty and Marty give to us. Anyone else have anything that they wanted to ask or add? Okay, so we can move on to um, ongoing business and talk about our meeting schedule for the year. <clears throat> so the school committee voted to hold our meetings on the second and the fourth Tuesdays of each month, but there are a couple of dates which pose an issue with that schedule. Um, the dates are provided here on our agenda. So Tuesday, November 13th, conflicts with a special programs committee um, that the district is sponsoring. Tuesday, January 22nd is another SPC planned event and the select board also has a meeting scheduled for that evening. And Tuesday, May 14th is our annual town meeting. So before we move into discussion of selecting our summer meeting dates, we should decide what to do about those three conflicts.
Yes, Karen. <laughs> so um, I didn't bring my LPVEC, so maybe the two members can look at their calendars as far as that it is concerned, but could we possibly just look at bumping it to Wednesday? That was my recommendation when I first saw the Tuesday conflicts, but I would like to have Bronwyn and Ryan maybe have it not conflict. I know those are typically held on Wednesday evenings. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I have. So I don't. like um, they have theirs the 13th and 14th in November. Well, green is the board. Yes. Yeah. So, so November 13th and 14th. So the thirteenth is uh, just the superintendent's meeting during the day. So they, the LPVC does have a meeting on the on Wednesday, the fourteenth of November. Of okay. November. Okay. Okay. Next week yeah. is Thanksgiving. Oh, that's. I mean, you could still you could. Oh, right. I don't know how you feel about it. I mean, you could you could have your meeting on the fourteenth, and it would just mean that um, the Ryan or Bronwyn, you, you wouldn't be able to attend the LPVC meeting that night. Not, not nothing we would want to make a practice of, but if it's just that one conflict, and then the January, you could move to January 23rd and not bump into the LPVC board meeting. So you would just, if you move to November 14th, that would be the sole conflict you would have with the LPVC board. Well, also, we're only meeting, um, are we just meeting once in November? Or will we on the, does anybody know? There would be. We would be on the 27th, right? We would have on the 13th and the 27th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we know offhand what the special programs, um, ha what the committee has lined up for that Tuesday, November 13th? That is uh, gentleman Rick Wormelli. And Rick is talking to the staff during the day. And so in keeping with their approach that to sort of have sort of one conversation, parents and teachers hearing the same thing. Rick will meet with parents in the evening. So what was the topic? Uh, so he he for the teachers it will focus on standards based instruction at the elementary level, uh, probably some homework and grading and um, talks at the middle and high school level. And for the parents, the thought was that um, parents being children's first teachers, how can parents support learning and how can parents encourage students to pursue learning for learning's sake. So we have a, we'll be scheduling a conference call with Rick probably in the fall to firm that up, but uh, I think it'll be, you know, good opportunity to sort of have that one community conversation and um, I think Rick would do a good job of talking to the parents about what he talked to the teachers about, so. Um, and then in January, I'd have to I'd have to go back to my notes to find out what the program is in January. Something about small. It was some sort of tea, uh, panel discussions. Um, we were talking about a sort of a wellness panel. Um, was that the January event or was that yeah. March? That was no, January. That was January. January. Yeah. So I wouldn't so want way, to conflict with yeah, those. Be, yeah, it, they yeah. Sound like. In that, good presentations. In that special programs committee, they had chosen the dates, I suppose, you know, back in, well, I think we yeah. picked them in April or you know, before we knew that the school committee was meeting that night, so. Right. I think a number of us may want to attend anyway. Yeah. Um, so we can discuss that, and then I guess Wednesday, May 15th, we would look at to avoid the conflict with town meeting. May 15th is also a board meeting. Oh, yes. About Thursday, May 16th. 
as an option. Okay, fine with me. Yeah. Looks like it'll work. <coughs> we, could do, we could do Thursday at 6.30, May 16th. And then we'll move the January 22nd to Wednesday, January 23rd, if everyone's in agreement on that. It seems everyone is. And then we can move the Wednesday, um, the Tuesday, November 13th, to the Wednesday as long as you're okay missing sure. that potential meeting or that meeting potentially one time. <laughs> so that seems easily got that Diane. Done. You're good. And it's Thursday, May sixteenth. Yep. Yeah. A Wednesday, a Wednesday, and a Thursday. Okay. Perfect. Um, and we'll keep consistent with the six thirty time. Okay. So we are also being provided with the information from the doodle poll that we all filled out for possible summer meeting <coughs> dates. So we wanted to schedule at least, the objective was to schedule at least one meeting in July and another in August. If you look at the poll, um, I was just noticing off the bat that July 23rd or July, the end of July, the numbers were higher for the most potential members to be available. So I'll open it up to discussion on, on what you guys feel about how what what date would work best for everybody here. Uh, 24th and 25th, it looks like everybody can come. Except for Stephanie. Except for Stephanie. You're gone the whole month, though, right? Oh, well. Sorry. Are you not available the whole month? I won't be there. I won't be there for that meeting, but that's fine. You just schedule it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think. Yeah. I have no preference for either. It can be the 24th or the 25th. Well, if you stick with Tuesday, that's your, your typical meeting night, that's so that, that for consistency's yeah. sake. Yeah. So July 24th at 6.30, we can put post for a meeting for that and then August to me Tuesday the 14th and it's the highest number of members that can attend but it also keeps with our Tuesday consistent meeting I don't know how anyone feels about that Works for me. yeah I think it gives time for some subcommittees to meet prior to um, and be able to give their reports still without having us run into the end of the year, which we were trying to avoid meetings that week anyway. So is everyone in favor of Tuesday the 14th, 6.30 p.m.? Yes. yes. Okay. So we'll do 8.14 and 7.24. That settles that housekeeping issue so we can move into the um, K through eight student handbook. Oh no, I skipped something on the agenda, I'm sorry. The policy and procedure review for filling the school committee vacancy is next on our agenda. So the school committee has been provided with the policies from our policy manual as well as the document developed in 2011 regarding filling a school committee vacancy. So these have been provided pretty much as in, um, informational documents. procedure sounded like a chess game. Yeah. It's, it's the most amazing thing I've ever read. <laughs> I know. Isn't it like a big chess it. game? <laughs> I'm thinking of hiring teachers that way going forward in my school. Right. 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 It's Very a, fair. It's a fair process. process. I wanted you all to be familiar with every aspect uh, of this because none of us have um, served on the committee when this has happened before. So <laughs> as much prep as we can do over the summer to prepare, I felt was... Um, One thing I need a clarification on. Sure. It's the second paragraph um, on the second page, the back of the first page. Are you talking about the revision document? Procedure? Yeah. Yeah, revision. Mm -hmm. So where it says, during the questioning phase of this process, questions may not be asked of previously questioned applicants. But you can ask the same question to all the, all the applicants, correct? 
I'm actually not certain. <laughs> I have been using Mark Gold as a sounding board because he has gone through this process four times and he is pretty well versed. So I have been emailing and calling him all week, mostly to work out our timetable, but he did um, any suggestions or questions that we have, um, I can certainly relay to him and, and get back to you. Yeah, I guess, does it, how, do, how does I everybody interpret that? I think the way I'm reading that? that is once they've had their turn of questions, and they've somebody else has taken a turn, we can't, can't go, back go back to the person before it and ask anything that may have popped into our head. This way I'm reading that. Someone did ask me um, if, let me go ahead because this might be your question. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, you might, might be, be the, the someone. someone. <laughs> so my question would be, and this is obviously a long shot, but um, I something that we just need to think about. If there's one applicant and they get zero votes, what happens? I asked Mark what would happen if the applicant pool was only one applicant, would we still go through the interview process? Because I wasn't sure if that was, if only one person puts in their application, does that mean they automatically are appointed? He said no, they need to go through the interview process regardless. Um, so it's always in your best interest to um, post for as much as you can, publicize it as much as you can, and really increase your applicant pool. Now, I don't think, and I may be mistaken, but from what I learned from him, I don't think we can reject, I don't think we can repost the job. Okay. Um, or reposts for the position. Um, that being said, <laughs> I'm sure different scenarios probably come up every time this is done in town, so um, I would have to get some more work done with the select board to figure out what happens if nobody is voted, or, you know, between, let's see, six of us, and there may potentially be four or five um, select board members, so. How would those numbers work out? I, I can't imagine 11 people voting no, but <laughs> I mean, you never know. A any scenario is possible, I guess. Um, but Mark is a good resource. Um, I have been in touch with him pretty consistently on this. Uh, thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for pulling together and, and finding a date at the end of August for us to do the interviews. Um, Mark was able to go back and take that back to the select board, and he has. Um, confirmed four out of five I believe he's waiting for a fifth member to confirm that they can make it but even if that that last person can't we will at least have four select board members and our full presence on that night of August 27th for the interview process so I actually have a question about mm -hmm. that because the way this third paragraph reads it seems like it's a max of ten which would mean five select board and five school committee which mean which would mean not all of us um, That's the way that reads. It, the last yes, paragraph? Sorry, Dan. No, <laughs> third one on the first page. Oh, first page. Can I tell you why that is? This was developed when there were two MPCs, and there were only five people on the beginning of the time. Oh, OK. Sorry. We need a revision five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a, a more recent revision than um, 2011. But Diane, you've lived through this. You're the, the seasoned veteran. <laughs> oh yeah, Tom, you were there too. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tom, Tom was trying. To, I forget you. I, you left the room. I thought you were trying to sneak away from this discussion. Um, so it, we we are moving forward throughout the summer. I do believe the job will be posted um, next week. Is what I had heard from Mark had sent the vacancy posting over, and everything's being done through town hall and going through the proper channels. But I think as far as the summer was. Since our workload is light, I wanted you all to have the documents so that you know what to expect once the interview process starts um, coming along. Mark will also be informing me of, of the applicants as they come in, so we'll have a constant dialogue about you know how many candidates to expect. And yes, Melanie. So, are you confirming the 27th? Because didn't you ask us to look at three dates, or did you get back to us and say which date it was? Well, the 27th was f for the interview, which is the lengthiest part of the week. Okay. We were anticipating that regardless of whether we had one candidate or five or six, 
we wanted to get all the interviews done in one night. So I was trying to schedule it so that you potentially knew that that would be one long meeting. Yeah. And then by law, we're required to meet um, within seven days to take a vote um, on the candidate. So I had given some backup dates. Okay. So I believe the last communication I had with Mark Gold was August 27th for the interview meeting and then a meeting the following week to take the vote, which potentially is a 15 minute, a quick meeting. Okay. Um, is what he foresees. I. I think we just have to be careful of that week because I think we start to bump into Labor Day. But we should be seven days out from that. So, Bronwyn? I was just wondering um, where uh, it's gonna be publicized. Um, it will be posted on the town website. I do believe it will be posted on Longmeadow Biz, Longmeadow News. Um, there was a third mm -hmm. reminder. Um, and we're not required to, but it was suggested that we post it on our school committee website. So we can, I haven't. Just to add, um, Mark Gold copied me on an email to Debbie House today, who is this, um, their admin assistant. I left you a copy of what they're going to post at everybody's spot. Um, and they, it is planned to go up Monday the 2nd. Mm -hmm. And Debbie and I, she said that, or Mark asked that they send me the list, so I will and definitely then distribute let you know. it to us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're also asking for resumes and cover letters, not just the simple application. Just so you know. I thought that was a and good that's addition. Stays posted seven days, or is there a posting time period? Is it ten? Ten. Seven. They are posting the. It will post on July second, but. We are actually keeping that posting open until August 17th. Okay. Um, you have to do a minimum of 15 days, but it doesn't state what a maximum would be. But because it's summer and people are away, um, both Mark Gold and I felt it wasn't really fair to post it for two weeks when you potentially aren't capturing a lot of the population. And he, he was in agreement with that and thought it's in our best interest to capture as many applicants as we can. So extend the, the posting right up until August 17th. I believe it's a Friday at noon is when the posting will end. Stephanie. On the um, <coughs> notice, it says to, to submit a cover letter and resume. Who is that going to go to? Okay. I don't know if they want to put that on here because it's not, I don't know how clear it is because it's a school committee vacancy and there's, uh, you might want to include it on there so they know where to send it. Mm -hmm. And if they can email it or if they have to, maybe something about that would be helpful. You can follow up with Debbie on that, Diane? Yeah. And thank you, Diane, for coordinating all of that admin work between um, town offices yeah. with getting all of that posted and getting those two boards together to get this posting done. Does anyone else have any questions where, where about? Where that letter? Oh, I'm sorry. Where were you reading from? The just one that Diane left us? Oh, letter. That, just that yeah, one. So okay. They know where to send okay, it. Okay, I thought it was the letter up. Okay. And Brahman, you had a question. I was just curious. Um, are we going to be looking at the? Resumes as they come in, or are we going to all receive them after the date posting dates closed? I don't think we would be able to meet, um, and I don't think that's. I I'm not really sure, Diane. You might be able to speak to it, but I don't think that's how the process. I will clarify works. with Mark Gold. With they were just copying me on emails this month, right? And I didn't really get into the conversation, so I will clarify whether they'll distribute okay. more than just the names as they go along. Okay. Um, and we'll, well, I'll find out when you can get that. Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. Cause if, yeah, because if you wait till that night, it's going to be a little... Right, we like can't really sit there, there and, and what read. What purpose of setting them <laughs> in if we don't get to look at them ahead of time? Right. So the resumes and cover letters. Anyone else have any questions? We're going to wish they had just ran during the election, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, but like I said, it's the end of June and we have our July meeting to, if we need to put this back on the agenda and certainly we'll look forward to that meeting on August 27th between the two committees. 
So moving on to the K-8 to student handbook. Okay, so, um, so you've had an opportunity to see the document um, previously and since you last saw it, uh, at least the, um, the more veteran members of the committee, since you last saw it, we had an opportunity to tighten up some of the disclosure language, uh, network disclosure, privacy disclosure language in the acceptable use agreement. Uh, at the committee's suggestion, we had taken out a, a sentence from the dress code that seemed like a vestige from another era. Um, that was a great pickup. The, um, also, thanks to uh, Diane and uh, Carla Zukowski for going through the document, cleaning up the, um, the formatting and the grammar. Karen picked up um, a handful of things as well. Thank you for reviewing it with the, and um, so I th think in that sense it's good to go. What what I like about the document, what Diane did, is she hyperlinked the table of contents, so users would be able to click on uh, an item in the table of contents and it would bring them right to the uh, item in the rest of the document. And we also um, uh, went through the document to ensure that we properly identified all the uh, protected classes that are required in uh, non-discrimination law. So that's sort of the update since you last saw it. For, for folks at home, again, um, this is a, an effort to kind of ensure that our administrative practices are aligned across uh, our K-8 schools. Uh, we previously had a code of conduct but that document was missing a lot of important legal notices. It didn't reflect accurately reflect um, school committee policy in some areas. Uh, and so we think that this is a document that captures not only the, um, the consequences perhaps for behavioral infractions, but it also articulates students' rights and responsibilities as well. So uh, again, thanks to the uh, admin team that worked on this, Paul Dunkerley, Bridget DeLay, Nicole, um, Paris Crow, Amy Bostian. Uh, so it's a, it's a, a document that it's a long time in preparation and um, I think one of the things to think about is that, you know, with any policy document or handbook, they're, they're living, breathing documents. And so as, you know, new statutes, um, are passed and as new regulations cross our desk, as school committee policy changes, then this document would change to reflect that. So, in fact, I already know that um, th there's probably going to be some adjustments, further adjustments to the acceptable use agreement that I I'd like to talk to the policy subcommittee about at some point. But um, right now, it's a it's a it's an acceptable use agreement that I think is 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 tighter than what we've um, had in the handbooks and code of conducts previously. So um, happy to answer any questions you might have or um, listen to any comments you might have. Um, Melanie? So when, if and when we do update this in policy, yeah. does this stand for the year? Or do you go in and do an agenda? How does that work? No, I think we would, we could change, change it, it sort online? of, yeah, change it online. Um, the um, distribution of this, um, we think we can make it available to families online and hard copies by request. Okay. Um, and so it would be easy enough to, to change. If hard copies get out, then we would just issue an addendum. But I think we might have it, um, we might have that tightened up before the school year even begins. So. Is social media not on this? Social media is referenced, I think, in here, um, if I remember correctly. Um, but that, that's another Did policy that's, that? yeah, that's, that's another policy that's currently under review by the policy subcommittee. So, um, so that, that's another example yeah, of something that. Yeah, I just didn't that, see it on here. Yeah. Um, no. Did you say the handbook was going to policy or acceptable? Well, I assume it's the acceptable. We, we use were talking agreement. about the acceptable use agreement. But that's Just, not a policy. That's right. The, we kicked that out of policy. Are you bringing it back? There. Well, there are a couple of things that he'd like to go over. I don't think it. Yeah, I think it's more just as a, you know, informational. If the if the policy sub wants to bring it back in as a policy, that's certainly an option. But I think it, it's um, the changes are such that even though it's not a policy, I'd, I'd like to kind of run it by policy sub just to get some feedback, the potential changes. Diane, did you have a quick? 
I do just want to point out the high school um, is getting ready to go forward with their handbook and they actually do some printed copies so they're waiting to know um, if they can put the acceptable use agreement in it as, as it's currently as it written. currently is yeah. written yeah and I told them I'd let them know tomorrow yeah because they're dying to go to print yeah Stephanie? I think there's some confusion because the, the that's an agreement and the school committee doesn't vote on that. So that would be up to Marty to decide whether the agreement goes in there or not, mm -hmm. unless po the committee wants to bring it back to a policy. But we had kicked it out of policy so that it would be updated um, yearly. So that wouldn't be something we would be voting on um, unless people have thoughts about it. But I think there's this... Um, back and forth between what's policy and, and what's not and I think it's important to make that distinction I think Stephanie's right so as a, as a standalone document it, it sits as an agreement that can be updated annually administratively but because it's incorporated in this document which we're, we're seeking a vote on um, I think that by extension it would be sort of seen as uh, approved by the school committee but um, but I agree it, it's it is a it is an agreement that would I think in today's day and age it just requires annual regular scrutiny because technology is always changing so um, you know once it seems like once the ink is dry on some of these agreements you, something else crosses our desks so, mm -hmm. so, so that makes sense it also says in there it refers to it as a policy mm -hmm. so that needs to be um, changed as well okay but I have other things to say that I can. So Diane, if there's if it if it describes it as a policy anywhere in here, can we just strike that word and just make yep. it an agreement? Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I just a uh, quick question about the appendix A. Yeah. Um, where did this document come from? That was in the the code of conduct. That was our sort of baseline. One of the one of the documents that we drew from. So if you recall, we drew from the the old code of conduct, which had been sort of sitting statically and hadn't been updated. So we drew from that. We drew from the high school handbook. We drew from the school committee policy manual. Uh, we drew from Mass General Law. So this this document was originally in that code of conduct. Okay. And it it's um. It's a framework, some guidelines that families can use to understand what the potential consequences would be. You know, it, it does suggest that, you know, these disciplinary situations, they're very situational, right? I mean, it all, you know, so, you know, what, what vandalism could be something that requires a simple conversation between a, a kid and, a, and an administrator, or it could be something more serious, you know, that where it would be potential out of school suspension so, so I guess my, my follow-up question to that would be um, will this I know you said it's a living breathing document will this be looked at because I know <clears throat> some of the things um, listed in here mm -hmm. I, I think um, need to be looked at again maybe mm -hmm. because I think that you know just off the cuff you know skateboards scooters rollerblades kids ride them to school you know they may, maybe it's just I just don't want us to be putting things in here that you know are going to cause anxiety for yeah. parents when really it's you know just something that's outdated at this point you know right. what I mean right yeah I mean it's it's sort of um, right students do ride scooters to school yeah I think it it this uh, I think it was kept in there when the, the hoverboards were the rage, yep. and uh, I think it, it gives it gives the administrator some discretion to you know if a skateboard or rollerblades are being used inappropriately mm -hmm. um, in school. You know there yep. was a time when kids had those wheelies and they were um, they were skating around in school, and so it offers administrators that discretion that if mm -hmm. those things are being used inappropriately, they they have something to. But frankly, you could strike that, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be a problem, really. Yeah, that, I think that's less of my concern is that you know yeah. one particular thing, but more to maybe at some point take a look at it and just make sure this is actually what what you do want as mm -hmm. things listed, and you do want them that as the consequences for right. those actions. 
would be my Absolutely, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And it, it just gives us, a, this document gives us a sort of a better baseline to work off of moving forward because, again, this, this code of conduct previously was just sitting dormantly almost online and so now we're we're going to be more explicit I think in making sure that it's part of what parents sign off on so it, it in many respects that code of conduct was already in effect but it you know just we weren't incorporating it into other notifications that that are incorporated here Stephanie um, so last time we had met we talked about some things one of them was the skateboarding that um, you know on school or riding a scooter on school grounds and wasn't changed and some other things weren't changed either um, the use of the word handicap is still in there but um, we have to sign off on this as a committee and there are things in here that are um, I, I have concerns with I can point out a few of them so in the first paragraph on on page six it says our mission and it's in quotes can you tell me where that's from Diane you have any history on the mission statement of yep yeah um, it was developed by the um, strategic plan committee um, years ago mm -hmm. when we had that committee they made the mission statement so one of the things that I would be interested in going forward is taking a look at some of those primary documents again you know the, the strategic plan the, <clears throat> um, I think mission statements seem to be being replaced by sort of identification of core values and so that might be something you know that could be a future project for the committee or the community as a whole it just it's in quotes so it's really it wasn't clear where that was coming from but then the second paragraph says two major goals of this code of conduct and discipline policy but it's not referring to anything the heading is goals of the k through 8 handbook but then it says two major goals of this conduct and discipline policy so i'm not sure it, that's not really referring to anything but more than that, um, you then have a section on students with disabilities, which um, you go on to refer to students with disabilities as students with special needs, um, and then um, special needs students. And those aren't terms that um, are generally used in a policy. What I'd like to see, um, and how this is written, sometimes you. MGL is cited, um, Chapter 71B, sometimes IDA. A. I think you can take from what a document that we already use from DESE on um, procedures that's um, given to parents, and, and it needs to cite the law, it needs to use the correct terminology. Um, it, it uses exclusion here, but it's not defined or used anywhere else. Um, you, you know something this I think you could probably use a lot from the parents notice of procedural safeguards I think that's the lightning um, that's our yeah. 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 Oh. Cool. Um, so how that was that's written okay. up I'm not comfortable with having in the handbook and I don't know that that particular section is not new language that that had previously sat in the code of conduct okay but this is a new document right. so i don't know how old that code of conduct is and that's you know i i think we're interested in having up to date you know wording handicap shouldn't be in there i brought that up the last time this needs to be consistent with students with disabilities and following how it's written in the law how it's written in our procedures and safeguards i would not want the handbook to differ from that um, and so I, I guess my question as I'm going through sometimes cross references are given on a policy sometimes they're not um, I, I think that you know we've gone back and forth with this so I guess I you know to do deep editing like this on here is not my role uh, if it's something that is a big project, I know it was part of your annual plan, but if you're looking for that deep editing, which I keep getting 
request for, I think that we need to think of a committee and if there are members who really want to go through and, and do that um, editing uh, with you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the answer is, but I know we have to sign off on this in order for it to go forward. As it stands right now, I'm not comfortable with it. Um, you know, that part maybe you want to give to Jean and have her rewrite um, and, and use the language, you know, that we have and, and give to parents already. Um, you can take from some of our, our policies as well. There's just some inconsistencies in here um, <clears throat> that are concerning to me that I don't feel comfortable with. So I think we've gone back and forth, and so I, I, I guess I would throw it back to you. This was part of your annual plan, and what do you want to, you know, and I don't know, maybe the committee is fine with it. I'm just speaking for myself, but it seems like this is difficult. You know, I brought up some of these things the last time, and they're still in there, um, you know. I think maybe it, another approach might help rather than doing the same thing back and forth. Melanie, did you have your hand up? Yeah. So I think we can all agree that this is a great concept, but it, it almost feels like it's it's a, it's a little rushed in the sense that, um, yes, it was on, on um, the plan, but then it came out right away, right around evaluation time. And then it, it, again, like Stephanie has mentioned, this is like the second or third time that it's been presented to us and I, I don't really know, okay, is this the final draft? And then, again, she's finding some of the same things. It still has policy and the handicap. It's not like she said. So I'm, I guess I kind of agree, agree with her that is it, does, is it gonna take another set of eyes, do you think? Is so it gonna that, take? That section on, so I, I'd say one of the things you could do is potentially prove it subject to, if there are particular sections that you'd like um, reviewed and amended, you know, if, if, if there could be potentially a vote to approve it subject to review and revision of section XYZ or whatever it is, I think that would be helpful to get some clear understanding of that. And then that section with the discipline for students with disabilities, I, I did run that by uh, Nick Dominello and he was comfortable with it, but I, I understand the concerns that you're expressing there, Stephanie, that, you know, with regard to some of the the language, I would just say that, you know, again, considering where we were um, with the publication of policies and where we were with the behavioral code that was out there, this is sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big leap forward, understanding that um, there could still be some sections that just need some ongoing review, but well, largely, a lot of this was pulled from sort of, you know, again, existing policy and existing language. And if there are particular sections that, that you want specifically reviewed and revised, you know, that, that could be a way forward for us. So it just gets something out of the gate with this, perhaps. But, but, well, I, I'm kind of with stuff that where I feel like it has to it has to be gone through again from the beginning to the end because you know, this is just her looking at over it quickly or me looking up and her catching two things or her catching two things. And, you know, some of it is a little more involved in referencing the proper law or whatever like that. That That is going to take a little time. But some of it is still not necessarily grammatical, but it is still being called a policy of the user agreement. And, you know, it's definitely, it is tedious. I just feel like there's no reason necessarily to rush it, and I feel like it keeps being, like, was your purpose for this to be approved tonight? I guess I don't really know what the purpose was to, again, have it here with some of these issues that are continuing. Like, I mean, would you think it would be helpful to have a, I, I a think, committee? I think, I think to get some, so sometimes when we have the meetings, we'll hear some individual comments, but getting some direction from the committee as to what, you know. Yeah, I think that she gave specific. pretty good direction, and, and I think the direction is the direction is there. You know, you're trying to create this K through eight handbook. Um, you know, having this written up for discipline with students with disabilities that's a really important section, and this is, this can't this is not how you know the language is is used. I'm surprised that he he let it um, go. Um, 
with that students identified as having special needs it's really students with disabilities and they're identified with specific disabilities that qualify them for special ed so that really needs to be consistent and that's I'm sure something that could be given um, you know Jean could look over and, and have but but there's there's other sections um, here where you refer to a um, conduct policy but you're really you're not it, it's you're talking about student discipline suspension and expulsion and then you say the student conduct policies but we don't have there's no policy I don't know what you're referring to there because you're not talking about those harassment policies you're talking about the discipline so there's some mismatch um, between it um, and then the no, no there's some cross references at the end of policies and there's not another one so I think it's important when you're citing a policy on here that it's clear that it's a policy um, you know it's basically lifting it from our policy onto here and so consistency with that you did that towards the end but not in the middle um, it, it's just a lot of um, you know it, I mean it just that's why I ask you know throwing it back to you what would be helpful because we keep going back and forth I personally I don't know how other people are um, feel about this but I'm not comfortable um, I would not be at all comfortable giving this um, to a parent with it um, like this well, uh, particularly that section with students with disabilities um, and then you know I mean so I know that this was this was your your goal and this was was something that you wanted to do but I don't know that th it's working you know it, it's yeah I mean clearly um, as I said, these things are, are works in progress and kind of recognizing that this puts us in a, in a much better position than where we were. So as a middle school parent, before I got here, before I came to this district, you would get a 13-page handbook to sign off on. And it, it, it included no <clears throat> school committee policy references, no statutory references, no, um, no indication of rights and responsibilities, the, the code of conduct had kind of disappeared into the cyber world. So this kind of puts us in a better position. I recognize that there, there might be some language that still needs to, that we can still continue to work on. And if I can get it, you know, there are specific sections that say, you know, you know, it's approved subject to review and revision of section X, Y, Z or whatever it is, then that's fine. Or otherwise we can just take it back and I think my, yeah, so I don't know. It's this is what I'm hearing. And Karen, I'll let you give one last comment and then I'll okay. kind of wrap, wrap up the discussion. Can, Marty, can you just help understand um, how this is going to be reviewed from year to year? So yeah. I understand sort of what we'll be looking at and will what, this be what, something what, that will be... Yeah looking at every year is it going to school councils is it can you sort of so uh, what, what we haven't had in this district um, is a district-wide handbook committee we have had six separate handbook committees working really inefficiently oftentimes in different directions and so my my vision here would be to have a district-wide handbook committee that would meet annually to review and revise this with whatever direction we get from the committee, with whatever direction we're getting from our attorneys, with whatever advice and input the, the administrators are offering as well. So that, again, I, that's been sorely lacking here in Longmeadow is, is sort of that, that district-wide look at language that's important to kids and families. So that would be that would be part of the ongoing review and revision. So it was a, a district-wide team that, that pulled this together. Um, and, and that would be sort of the ongoing approach. And it would come know. back to us every year? Come back to the committee every year, okay. yeah. Is that team still uh, in place? Or so yeah, we had, well, it certainly could be in place. Um, but it was, again, uh, Bridget Delay, Nicole Paris Gro, Amy Bostri, myself, and Paul Dunkley. And uh, it was, it was um, a lot of work to try to, they took an inventory of the entire code of conduct. They took an inventory with Diane's help too of the entire school committee policy manual. 
they took an inventory of the whole high school handbook to figure out the elements that belonged in this document. And so I just want to kind of emphasize that, you know, this puts us in a, in a much better, much better position than we've been in, understanding that there might still be some work to do. And, you know, that, that's, I'm always committed to the development and improvement of handbooks. I think it's been, frankly, neglected um, for a long time. And that's, that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. I, I didn't want, I couldn't, in good conscience, kind of continue without giving parents and kids the proper notification that we needed to make to them. So, um, I, I, you know, these things are always, you know, any policy manual, any handbook, they're always in need of improvement and update and revision. So that, that would definitely be part of the ongoing work here. So. so I would, I guess, like to point out, hearing what Marty said and hearing what the committee has said, um, and I think I heard you at the beginning of the discussion, Karen, say that you would also send some revisions mm -hmm. to Marty. Yes. So recognizing that this is a substantial document, it's 48 pages. Um, I don't know how familiar Bronwyn and Ryan were able to get up to speed with it. It's a fairly new document for you guys. We've seen it a few times in review. Um, but I think because it's so um, substantive and like Marty said, we've come <clears throat> from a, excuse me, a 13 page, like a minimalist handbook to a document that we really wanna be proud of. I feel like we're getting there, but I don't think this is ready yet. Um, just because there are changes uh, a to Z, even like as a school committee, grammar wise, it would really pain me to put out something that just had some grammar mistakes in it. Um, just are there, are some, there still grammar errors? I think there's a error. couple no, of okay. spots, but um, just because I am that person that <laughs> is always gonna correct somebody on there, there, and there, and a period and a comma, it, I think as a school committee especially, you wanna make sure you're putting your best foot forward in terms of um, your document. Um, so that's important, but I, I appreciate all of the work that you've done in the committee, um, the people you assembled together, and I think it's getting there. I don't think it's ready to go across the finish line yet. Um, I would be, like Melanie said, I don't think there's any rush. I think um, this is good, you know, it needs a deep dive at it again, I think, but I would say that it's almost there but I feel, I, I just don't think that we should approve a portion of it knowing that a bunch of it may be amended. Um, I'm just not, I'm not comfortable doing that either. Um, I'm, I'm just not ready to bring it for, I, I think it's like 80, 85 to 90% there. It's, but it is, it, I think we wanna give it the proper attention that it, it deserves and I appreciate everyone pulling together and making um, one one district committee for handbooks makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because we're at the beginning end of this, once we get this going and we have that committee, the revisions each year should be pretty seamless, I would imagine, for us. So I feel like we you know put the hard work in now, get this established, and we can roll it out, and it'll make life um, <coughs> easier for when the the amended agreement needs to come in, but that's just the way I feel. Uh, Bronwyn? I just have a quick question. Um, well, first of all, I, I do want to, as you mentioned, applaud uh, Dr. O'Shea and the team for putting this together, um, as opposed to the 13-page document um, used previously. Uh, my, I guess my question is, if the team looked at it several times, and maybe didn't see the things that some people on the committee are seeing, what's the best, you know, what are the next steps to best kind of uh, address those issues? You know what I mean? It's kind of, um, Right, because potentially we could keep going right back and forth with the document, yeah. Yeah. I but I the, think there's enough in yeah. here that needs to be if, looked at. Right, and, and I know sometimes in meetings there's some conversation around, you know, well, how about this or how about that? And sometimes that's hard for Diane and I to keep track of all that and what, what the potential adjustments are or changes are. So if I can get that, you know, in a, whatever, in an email, I'm happy to go through it, take it back, bring it to um, our attorney, bring it back to the right person to get the verbiage where we want it to be. Um, so any, any feedback you have, sometimes 
the, the, the difficult part would be if I had one committee member say we should do this, this, and this, and maybe maybe the rest of the committee might not want that. So that's that's one of the challenges. But I, I haven't heard anything here tonight that I haven't heard anything that I wouldn't want to adjust in this document. You know, I mean everything people have said makes sense, but kind of. It would maybe be my suggestion for you to go into the document and you do as much cleaning up as you need to, given the replies that people have given you via email, because I think you already solicited information for that, and then send it out to us again. And um, once it's all cleaned up, I, I can't see how there would be a constant back and forth. Like once it, <coughs> once the work's done in there and it's cleaned up, it should be done. Yeah. And then we see it and, and it's, okay. you know. We'll hour. do that and we'll, we'll uh, if that makes maybe, any maybe sense for your August, your August meeting, we probably could be in a position to. Melanie, you have a quick? Um, yeah, just quick. I, I, I almost feel like it's like a page by page. It's, I mean, that is going to take a little bit of time, but kind of like what we've all been doing and picking up, it's a page by page and looking for references to policy. Are, are you calling it a policy? Looking for words like handicap. Um, wherever they reference stat statute or um, law or whatever it is. That, that's what you should be honing in on as you're reading. And then... Um, you know, everyone's probably already decided about the penalties and things like that. That, you know, I don't really see that it needs to go back to your committee again because it sounds like you've figured all that out. It's just about making this more workable. And if it, this was mine, I would be going page by page with my yellow marker or my pen and really just looking for grammatical errors, um, where we call it a policy, um, the user agreement, where we mention handicap or, or phrases that should be, and wherever there's a law, just to make sure that and the code of conduct book. So those are like five key words right there that if you went through on your first go through, you'd probably cat, catch 10 things right there, wherever it's referenced to code of conduct book, because they don't, nobody knows what that code of conduct, if you're just going forward with this, they don't know about a code of conduct book. So maybe that just gets completely taken out. I don't know, because I'd have to read this whole thing again and see it in context. But I would look for those five or six things as you're going through it. And that's, that's just a good start right there, because you're going to eliminate probably 10, pro 10 issues that we found tonight. Now, whether it's, if it's you sitting down with someone else and doing it, um, I mean, it is gonna take a little bit of time, unfortunately, but that would be my advice. Stephanie? And I think what it sounds like is the team gave you information and then you, you um, compiled it and put it in here and, and maybe that's, um, it's really in the compilation where um, things just don't make sense and references are given to things that are not there so it really I agree with Melanie it really is a, a page by page document and yes this is um, you know the majority of this I would say 80% of this is our policies you know and then maybe even 90% is from our policy manual um, so this isn't an entirely created new document um, those are the policies that are in there it's the um, lead into them and that some of them that has, um, you know, on the disability part, it would have been better to have some of what we already give parents and what we already have on there um, and the language that we use and that's referenced in, um, in the law. So it really, it is a page by page thing, but I don't want the new people to think, uh, you know, Bronwyn and Ryan to think this the majority of this is in our policy manual and the elementary schools and middle schools will still get that small packet that's relevant um, and specific to their school so even without this we have our policy manual they're going to have their individual uh, information given by their school so I believe we do have time to really go through this but I don't, and I know Marty said it again, to send edits. That's not my job. I'm not going to go through and deep edit. I have read this so many times now. I'm, I'm um, you know, if, if that's where you want it to go and you want it to go to a subcommittee for somebody to really go in it with you and do that deep editing, then let's, let's see who wants to, to do that and take the time. But um, having the committee sending it out in draft form and then having the committee do your edits and sending it back to you is not, um, I don't see that as, as my role on the, on the committee. You know, I've offered suggestions, then they haven't been taken, and then I'm back here again, and um, that's why I threw it back at you. What do you want to do? Because I am, um, I, I, I've read this thing so many times. I could probably, you know, 
and, and it still has a lot of um, problems that haven't been addressed. So uh, th that's where I stand with the handbook. I, I think that it, it, it's, it can get there. I don't know how because we're going back and forth. So that's why I was trying to figure out. And then um, the suggestion was for us to send edits again. I don't know where the committee stands on that, but. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not, I'm not looking for edits. I think it's just what are the, what are the topics that you feel like need to be addressed? Uh, I'm, we're, we're, we'll go through it and, and do all the editing. And, but if there are some general areas that you feel like we're. Uh, Five or six, I mentioned. Even if you yeah. just type the word policy and have policy be highlighted yeah. through the document and go through and see everywhere. Or the word policy is right. See, is it in the right context? Or? Brian, would you have your my, hand up? Sorry. I, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. I think maybe what Stephanie said is a good idea. Um, I'd be happy to, if there is a subcommittee created, I'd be happy to serve on that. Um, I don't know what it entails, like creating a subcommittee or whatever, but. Um, um, I think that I'm appreciative of the suggestion. I think, I don't know if we're there yet. Is that something you want to do? Because it. It no, makes I'm, sense I'm, to me. You're you're I'm ready not, to do the editing. Not, yeah, I'm you're not, just looking. For I don't think it ought to be work for the school committee. It's just you you know, want trying to get some. Yeah, to what, focus what are what are the what are the areas that we that that we want to make sure that you feel comfortable with? And I'd say let's let's uh, bring it back to you probably. I think we're going to need some time over the summer. Bring it back to you at your August meeting. Maybe. Yeah, I think do the deep editing, and then in particular, I think the disability section was referenced. Um, Melanie's suggestions on taking code of conduct out completely, um, and then I think it'll be in good shape if that you know all that work gets done on the 48 pages. So the, the so for tonight, the areas are the the disability section. Those the, first three paragraphs on page the six. AU, the AU, the acceptable use agreement, making sure it says agreement and not policy. That's two. And then three, I just want to make and sure. The, the student conduct policy, wherever it references Making sure that, it doesn't say code of conduct instead of, right. That's kind of a phantom yeah. thing. Um, but I think, Marty, it really is just going through, I mean, because I can go through every single one of these, yeah. but it really, if I can go through it and see them, then if you go page by page, you're going to be able yeah. to, to see that it doesn't make sense. Things are referenced that aren't there. Um, so checking the reference. It, yeah, and, and I mean, just, it's just a matter of reading through it and seeing if it makes sense in it, you so, know. Right, and, and just... You know, each so each year that code of conduct is, that that has been sort of sitting in cyberspace that hasn't even been brought to the committee. I, you know that you know, um, so we're we're working through an area that has been neglected, frankly, uh, and so I'm happy to continue the work of pulling this together and get into a place that that works for the committee. So I think uh, maybe we shoot for the August meeting. Yeah, that sounds. That sounds fair. I think Appendix B needed to reference the social media policy. It's not listed under here. I don't believe it is. Appendix B and social media. But that's And then because it'll be a work in progress for you to be doing, um, if anyone had gone back and done another reread or triple read and had something that we overlooked tonight, just is it fair to say have them shoot you the yep. suggestion yep. in an email? Yep. Okay, Marty, right, one more. can you just also add to, I think we had, um, I had emailed this to you, but I went back on my notes. It was just the substance abuse section. Right. Um, my notes and my recollection of the policy meeting when Paul and Shelly came was that they changed the language to substance use right. rather than substance right. abuse. Substance. Use. No, wasn't it use. substance abuse? No, no I think it's the other way. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was substance. Well, paging, I don't care. Um, page 33. I was thinking it was the other way around. Yeah. That they, no, so, because yeah. Shelley's title is okay. substance abuse coordinator. Right. Not <laughs> substance. They, 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 right. Well, <laughs> changing that. no, I, I think no, that's the. It can't be a substance use. <laughs> because she, she would say, uh, I'll go back and check it, I think. But that is her, okay. her title, so that's kind of what I was going off of. Right. She, she, she'll say, there's yeah proper uses of substances right. but we'll, we'll go so I'll, if you could just i'll check with check with her on that yeah. just because um i know that we had changed some of our language during policy to say substance, substance use, use rather than substance abuse so okay. that it wasn't we weren't stigmatizing right. because of the abuse. right gotcha so if you could just check yeah. that with her and yeah. her opinion on that would be yeah. <clears throat> 
I guess if we're going through everything, there's also cyberbullying, I think, needs a definition. And, um, and the terms that are used are not defined, but they're part of um, language that's used to talk about things, like flaming, which I didn't know I had to Google it. Um, and so those things are on there, which might be helpful. I'm not sure, but I think a definition of cyberbullying is needed. And, you know, the sentence, don't be mean. I don't know. On a yeah. handbook, I think we need something a little more than don't be mean. Uh, so I think that that whole, that's, page that? that's on page 38. So if you can just look over <coughs> that, um, there's plenty out there that, um, so that defines cyberbullying. So cyberbullying section? Yeah. So that section there, I just want to double check this. Um, I mean, it's a very important section, but I, you know, just from a quick search, I, you know, there's some really um, good definitions out there rather than just examples um, that I didn't even know what they were. In the acceptable use agreement? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And then another part of that um, agreement. I'm sorry. So there, there is um, just so everyone, the, the. The new, your new bullying policy is in there as well. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, so that should have the sort of um, real specific information around bullying and cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. It's going to show you the 49. That's where it's policy. Yeah. So kind of taking a look at that and making that a little tighter. Um, be good. Um, so those sound like definite sections to work on. I don't think um, we're, we should go now page by page through a 48 page document. I think you understand, you know, what you're going to do with the document. And then if anyone has anything that's glaring to them, I think they should, in the interest of time, email it to Marty um, so that we're not sitting here working on the document um, altogether. I don't think that was the point of of bringing it here for us to, to go page by page and and correct it all. I think you'll be able to take care of that. And then if we have um, specific sections that we feel strongly about, they can just send the yeah. suggestions to you. Um, so if that's good with everyone, we can move on to the new business. So the new school committee member orientation, um, MASC, which is the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, provides an orientation charting the course, which fulfills the required, um, the legal requirement. I don't have any information on charting the course because I think there was just a charting the course on June 16th. Yeah, there are not um, scheduled according to MASC. Okay. Like right now. So, so but I do believe that Russ Dupree um, was able to uh, go to the MASC MASS joint conference. That's our alarm again. Yeah. And that's how he was able to fulfill that requirement by attending certain. Yeah. So if you go there, you get the um, the brochure, the agenda. It it highlights and stars the courses that the conference sessions that you could go to to fulfill that charting the course requirement to fulfill the requirement around orientation for new members um, I think Michelle had also talked about we had Glenn Kutcher come here last time to speak and I had gone to charting the course but then he also came to speak and I thought that was really helpful and that's what they had done for her so I don't know if that's an option to have him come um, he could speak to the new members and he could speak to the you know the veteran members too. Uh, I think it's nice refresher. So maybe that's an, an option. I don't know if Glenn's the only one who does it, or if there's somebody else. Um, I know he did it last year. I want to say <laughs> late August for us, or maybe early. You might not want to ask him until you get a new member seated. Right. But that is an option. Yeah. I, I think the sooner the better, because when you wait until you know November and you're going to learn how to write goals, and you've already written them. You know what I mean? Oh, you mean for the conference itself, I think not, not for Bronwyn and Ryan to complete charting the course? No, but I think the sooner it can be done for them, the better. I mean, any of that. Did you do charting the course? 
No, no, we when did Glenn. what Glenn did when he oh, came. Oh, right, yeah, because if he, he, Glenn did a much, I think Glenn's was, um, well, no, that was a separate one. Glenn came another time. Did he come when you were here? That was a different, that was for the evaluation, but he came another time. No, no he we came were for, here. yeah. The, with the big he came with the big charting, the course binders. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay, yes, yeah. much better than when you I go. Think, yeah. yeah, and I feel like the sooner we have it. We come. have that the better, especially for the new members. And of course it would make sense to wait for the third, but I'm saying like September, early September, because again, you're learning how to write school committee goals and they will have already been written by then and you will be frustrated and, and everything else. And, and I know that's a continual learning process, writing those goals. And we'll still go again in November, I'm sure. But that's just my advice. To not, you'll, be, you'll be six months into this committee by the time November gets here. Right. I think if we were interested in have, well, we can discuss once we get to the conference, um, you know, how Bronwyn and Ryan feel about their schedules and what they want to do. But as far as if we have Glenn come back and we wait, potentially if we voted in a new member um, no later than, say, like, I'm just throwing an arbitrary date out, September 8th, we could try to align it so that Glenn came within a two or three day period of when that vote is taken so we can get all three of you in the room together with Glenn and that kind of gives you a good, you get the, that big, you'll get like a three inch binder of information that can become your bedtime reading. And um, you'll have that solid basis going right into the school year, which would be nice. Yeah. But we can talk about that in the- And that full, the, the old orientation binder that's all in that, that new school committee member um, folder that we set up. So oh, it, the whole binder is? Yeah, the whole binder is there. Um, oh, perfect. So, and then the overview PowerPoints and a bunch of other documents. So even if you're waiting, That's super helpful. you know, waiting for the formal charting, charting the course, course, everything's already there. Yeah, it's just, I, I would think it's probably 99% the same as what you're going to get in September. Well, that is, that is good to know then. Um, so as far as the MA, I, I wanted to kind of couple the MASC Summer Institute with the MASC Mass Annual Conference. Um, so the first item on the agenda is the MASC Plan the Summer Conference for Friday and Saturday, July 20th and 21st. And you have that information in your packet um, as the Summer Institute sheet. So you're able to book for one day or both days, and then there's a quick look at the agenda. So um, there's a one session on Friday from 4 to 6, and it looks like two separate sessions on Saturday. Um, but I wanted to talk about it in conjunction with the annual conference because there are some duplicate sessions. Um, also realizing that people are away in the summer. Um, I know, like, I'm just using it as an example. Like, I'm just going to say Bronwyn would be phenomenal for you to attend a session on high school start times. Right. Whether you did that in the summer, given your schedule, or whether you come to the November one, that particular topic is offered twice. Okay. So you have a little flex, you know, if you see something that you really like right. um, being held as a session, some, some are duplicated. Um, so I kind of wanted to have a conversation with everyone and get a sense of, um, I guess if you felt it, you know, it was worth it last year when we went, if there's interest in going this year, um, if people want to pick or choose between one or the other, um, what your thoughts were on that. Karen. So um, just for Bronwyn and Ryan, so last year, um, most of, I think six of us went down to the, um, the one in Hyannis in November. And so I think it was like a Thursday, Friday, was it a Wednesday, Saturday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and stayed down there. And you could sort of pick and choose um, which courses were of interest to you, what you thought you, know, you needed. Um, some of them were outstanding. Some of them were you know, a little hit or miss. Um, it, what I found from the last session was a lot of the really interesting ones that I would have liked to listen to were on Saturday. <laughs> and yeah, so it was the last like day. the last day when we were leave we had left. Um, so um, just for your sake, it's you know, you would need to be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's like the, the time commitment piece is a is a big piece of that. Um, I did think some of it was really worth it and it's a nice way to 
you know, get to know um, your team, get to know, um, you know, you go out to dinner with Marty, you go out to dinner with the team, you um, meet some people from other districts. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of what that conference is all about. And I would just like to add that um, I think we, we all learned something from it, but I, I like the way we set it up. We didn't all <coughs> attend the same. We all kind of picked something that we liked. And if we overlapped, like maybe you and Michelle went to one session together or Melanie and I. But for the most part, we kind of all split up and covered as much ground as we could. And that way you can gather the information and bring it back to the rest of the committee, um, which I found to be helpful. Mm -hmm. So you would have to consider... Um, your time time commitment as far as your your away from work commitment or your family um, obviously the summer one's a little bit lighter and I think an easy drive and doesn't really require a stay over but the November one is definitely a um, book a hotel and attend but I wanted to put it on the agenda um, specifically because of the savings for the November one mm -hmm. if we do register before July 15th it, there is a hundred dollar cost savings per person which I, I think is worth taking advantage of if if we have interest going back so I'm open to hearing whoever wants to attend Melody. so I thought it was was definitely helpful for all the reasons that both of you mentioned so I, I'm definitely interested in going back and I I could go in July as well um, I could go to both sessions or I could go to one I don't know if you want to decide as a team or do we decide, I don't know, what, how do you want to handle it? So I just have a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, so um, are the new people supposed to go to um, the summer one as well? Or I mean, I definitely would like to go to the one where the whole team's going uh, for a couple of days. Yep. But I was just wondering, like, you don't have you're to right. None of these are mandatory at all. These are completely optional. Whatever yeah. works for you. If you're interested in going in November with a larger group of us, okay. perfect. Don't feel like you're obligated to go to the the mini one, the little mini summer institute. Yeah, July might be trickier. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to the July for reasons, vacation reasons. But you want to leave it where everyone just gets back to Diane yeah. with, yeah. and and Diane can handle the registration. So let us know if you want to do the summer one and or the fall one and and then we see where we stand and then you would be able to book for us prior mm -hmm. to um july 15th for the yep i'm assuming we have approval to yeah um, i don't know how that we'll have to register like i don't even know if rooms are still available that's how fast it books up so the november give event, me yeah. an idea of how many rooms i need to fax off and reserve tomorrow okay so, so right now you want like yeah, right now. possible because interest. I don't know if you'll even get into yeah. okay. The we didn't have enough center. last year. We didn't have enough yeah. rooms last year. Right. I don't well, know, but it wouldn't be a problem because um, my brother lives 15 minutes from this. So. Okay. So yeah. you're opening up the house. Right. 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 <laughs> house party. Nope. That's so nice of your mom. Yeah. Um, so if show of hands, who would go? You want the November for the hotel purposes? Yeah, I just right. want to know how many rooms I'm going to book. Because you can, you can. Cancel it. Yeah, I, I should I grab six rooms? Yeah. I I will go, yes. but you don't count on me for a room. I can, I can get my own. So just book five, and then we can You're cancel. Well, I can I can book six. That I if that if I cancel, I know I'll, well, we somebody know, else will get it. We know two are all set, Ryan and Beth. So yeah. if we book five, that's safe. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Well, a new person. Yeah. I I. Uh, I'm not sure about my schedule with it, but I also, um, but I could get a, a room. I don't need to stay there. But um, I also just wanted to mention last year, I, I didn't go to MASC, but Marty and I attended um, a conference on child sexual abuse in um, schools. And then the year before that, I went to an equity um, seminar in DC and uh, flew down that day, flew back. It was, um, so I did that. and I. Um, and that was still significantly cheaper than MASC. But there were other things, so it was nice that we all kind of came back with different information. So I just wanted to add that, that there are other opportunities too, but MASC sounded like a good one. I just don't know my schedule, but... Um, so you're a tentative room? I don't need a room. I would get my own. I don't need okay. to stay there, yeah. So I would say, 
stay with the five because like Bronwyn suggested, even though it's four that definitely need it, let's consider the new member mm -hmm. that might need one. Okay. And that way if we have to cancel one, we can cancel okay. one. But we'll okay. at least have the five going forward. And then you can all just individually let Diane know what you feel about the July one. Sound good? It, that's the discount for the room. As far as needing to let you know if we can attend the conference, when do you need to know? That's the no, that's no the, the July. You're telling me the room so I can book them so that we get one of them. Right. The the, uh, the conference is by the fifteenth of July. Right. So the discount I is for the conference yeah, itself. The, oh, yeah. Discount the discount conference. for the conference. Can you? She just wants to make sure we have a place. Yes, I just but you, you need it. Cancel. You can't cancel on the conference. No, I can't get money back if you okay. cancel on so the conference. So I don't want you to take my. I got to verify that date. So don't put me down for the conference. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like everyone will be emailing you tomorrow, Diane, okay. <laughs> with their calendars. Okay, so that wraps up the um, MASC business, and we can move on to kindergarten enrollment discussion. So we have enclosed in the packet um, class size reports for the three elementary schools. So you, you see um, the register, we call it registered enrollment at Wolf Swamp Center in Blueberry, and then the projected resulting class size. Uh, we call it registered enrollment because there are students at the kindergarten level that are sort of out there on the census who have not yet registered. So um, Diane does a nice job of tracking that for us just to see what the increases might look like potentially. So the, as is often the case, um, <laughs> following a you know you set the budget in January and then enrollment patterns change and so you um, I believe this happened last summer and so this summer we are asking you to consider adding an additional section at the kindergarten level at center school you'll see that there are 64 students registered at kindergarten uh, at center school and we have three sections. So already, even with the registered enrollment, we're kind of pushing the, uh, towards the level of what we see as sort of reasonable, acceptable class size. So in that case, in center school's case, we have six uh, students that are on the census who have not yet registered, so they may or may not register. Uh, but given that, and given the fact that it's only June and we still have July and August to go, we're seeing a lot of movement, a lot of registrations, we think it would make sense to add a section at the kindergarten level at center school. And so this was uh, sort of considered and vetted by uh, Finance Sub, um, and Mr. Maz is confident that um, he could make the adjust adjustments budgetarily to, to handle that potential additional investment. So uh, we're hoping to, uh, for you to consider, think about an additional section at the K level at Center School. And happy to answer any questions or concerns or. As far as those six students that we're tracking through the census, Marty, yep. what do we just, Diane, do you, do you guys keep just an eye on that? Or is there any type of letter that gets nope, sent? No, the they've families been are, we reach out. Yeah. Um, okay. and from what we understand, those six will are intending to register. They just haven't done it. Okay. So we, we think we could be over 70 students with with what Diane just described and summer move-ins. We think it's very possible to be over 70 students at center school. So with uh, that that would be beyond what we could reasonably um, reasonably instruct with just three sections. So. Absolutely. Anybody else have comments? Any questions for Marty? We do have a recommended motion. I move that the school committee authorize the addition of the kindergarten section at center school for the 2018-19 school year. Second. Any other comments? I seconded that. I did. You did. <laughs> okay. Seeing no more discussion, we can just call for a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? One abstention. So the motion passes. 
We do not have an executive session planned for this meeting this evening, <coughs> so we can make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.